Welcome to Marchmont St. Giles on this Back to Church Sunday. As we gather once more in the building, we know it is a small step towards getting back to normal. It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but here we are. Little by little, we will reclaim the space and share together with everyone who continues to worship at home. So welcome. It's good that you are here in person or online. As we're not allowed to sing in the building, the order of service also includes a little bit more audience participation in the prayers. So let us begin. And you're going to have to put up with me in the church here of using the doofer to, to follow everything through. So, the Lord be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So, for everyone at home, we are going to sing hymn 685. And for those of us in the building, we're going to follow the words. And if we want to, I'm sure we can hum very quietly, but we're not allowed to sing in the building. So hymn 685, for everyone born, a place at the table. Everyone born, a star on the earth, and the 
there will be a prayer of confession followed by a short prayer of absolution. So let us say the prayer of confession together. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and pr pr of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Let us pray. On this beautiful new day, when the sun shines and the rain is past, we give you thanks that we can gather at home and in person, that we can say our confession, that we can know once more that you forgive all, that, all the ways in which we fall short, and we give you thanks that this life is one which makes our hearts sing and leads us on journeying together. So may we together and apart give thanks that we are your people and you journey with us every step of the way. And we ask for your presence here and in every place we inhabit so that we might know the best way to live and that we might be creators of justice and joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's time to, for me to speak to the children. I've already been speaking to the children this morning because we're continuing to have our Zoom early service. And I was talking to them this morning about Passover. The story of Passover is a very important story, both in Jewish tradition and in Christian tradition. So children, I know you're sitting at home. I wonder if you have a particular story that you like to tell. Maybe it's a story of when you were born or a special birthday. Or perhaps, like every family, it's a story about journeying. We have a story in our family. When we go to get the ferry to go to the Western Isles, we have a habit of always stopping at a particular place. And there was one year where we didn't just stop in that place, we stopped in about six other places because one of the children, for whatever reason, was not well. And he just had, we kept having to stop the car so he could get out and throw up at the side of the road. And after six stops, we were late for the ferry. And every year when we're driving up that road, we remind him of that journey. Because not every journey is a happy journey. And we are on this journey today. We've taken our first step. The people in Egypt all those years ago, the people of Israel were told they were going to go on a journey. And they didn't know what was going to happen. And it happened so quickly, they didn't have time to prepare all they had time to make was bread without leaven because that was quicker. And that is why at Passover every year we talk about unleavened bread. I was telling the children earlier that Moses came down to Egypt and said, let my people go and Pharaoh would not let them go. And so plague after plague after plague after plague came. Gnats and boils and frogs and locusts. And still Pharaoh would not let his people go. And at last they were told, prepare. So they gathered all their belongings, made their quick bread. And in the morning they were allowed to go. 
And it was the start, the beginning of a very exciting time together, but not an easy time and not, I suspect, the time they wanted. And like us, we are going to be worshipping at home with the children and slowly but surely the children will return and we will be a congregation that gather together but also at home. And it might not be what we expect, but the children are quite excited for the next few weeks when we begin and continue to tell the stories of journeys. So, as has been our habit, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are now going to sing the children's hymn, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. child in church. This is so exciting. Um, we are now going to hear Katrina Moss read the lesson, Exodus chapter 12. The reading this morning is from Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14, Passover. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night 
They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Amen. Teresa of Avila said and challenges us in her words, Christ has no body but ours, no hands, no feet on earth but ours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. Yours are his body. Christ has no body on earth but ours. Teresa was a remarkable woman. In the 16th century, when most women were not taught to read or write, she was highly educated. She became a nun and a revered and renowned woman, known for her deep spiritual insights and mystical prayer, her visions of Jesus and Mary, and the reformation of the monastic system in Spain. She's also known to have written this poem, Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing make you afraid. All things are passing. God alone never changes. Patience gains all things. If you have God, you will want for nothing. God alone suffices. In the last five months, we've waited patiently and impatiently for change. A time when we might know and feel a little hope. It's so good that we have still been able to worship together for worship at this t challenging time is difficult. And as we gather here and at home, this pivotal time of change can feel dangerous and unsettling and not a little unsatisfying. We have not yet reached our destination, whatever that is but we have begun a new journey. Today we heard Katrina read the story of Passover. It is not a nice story. Before freedom and the new way arrived, there was death and there was grieving. It was unnecessary. Despite nine other plagues and warning, Pharaoh would not let them go, but instead, they all suffered together. And then the killing and the cooking of the lambs and the bitter herbs and the unleavened bread and the painting of the blood on the lintels of the doors began. And as the angel of death flies over the land, the houses not painted with blood endured the death of the firstborn. And in the morning, even the house of Pharaoh was not untouched. This event became the foundational moment, the celebration of Passover and the foundational moment in Judaism and also of Christianity. It's the same event which Jesus turns up for in Jerusalem all these years later and it inaugurates the beginning of freedom 
of the first, on the first month of the year, which in modern terms is September. The journey was not the ending, only a new chapter in the return to the land of milk and honey. And the future would not be without trial nor tribulation and change. We know from the book of Exodus all the challenges that the people went through. But just at that precise moment, they began to relax as their slavery was complete and their freedom was assured. But what did freedom look like? Well, it wasn't quite what they hoped for. The Christian church proclaims that we are people of Easter. On the third day after Passover, we stand in the garden with Mary. We stand on the first day of a new epoch, let alone a new year, waiting to be delivered. The question is, how can we work alongside God to create a community worthy of our calling to embody and embrace this new freedom, this new epoch. But like the people of Israel, let's not be overwhelmed by the enormity of the future. We need to take it one day at a time, one small act of caring, one small action, one small step. We need to gain confidence in what we are about to embark on. And even the smallest act can make a huge difference in the life of someone who is overwhelmed by the current events. And that might even be us, each one of us here and at home. So let's take one step at a time. And let, let's give thanks for the good things in our lives and hope in the future one step at a time. Amen. The anthem this morning is by Andrew Carter, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. <laughs>
the intimations. It's good to have so many people back in church and it's good that so many of you are continuing to worship at home. We will now be open each Sunday at 10.30 and the children will meet at 9.30 on Zoom. As you come in and you make your offering at the door before the, the service begins, in two to three weeks' time, we will also have a one-tap contactless machine. So if you don't want to bring money, you can also make your offering by a contactless donation. There are still jams and chutneys available for purchase. And if anybody wants one, just let me know. And we are still collecting for Richmond Craig Miller, who are doing amazing work with people who are very vulnerable in Craig Miller. And as far as I know, apart from announcing the Kirk session meets tomorrow night on Zoom, those are all the intimations. We are now going to say our prayers and later on in the prayer, we're going to um, make a response. So let us pray for our world. Each day's dawn brings your possibilities of life and love and commitment. To you whose goodness never ends, we raise these prayers for your beloved people. We give thanks for the many generations who have lived faithfully and presented us with good examples of living. We pray for children and generations yet unborn that they may look equally to us to examples of good faithful living. We pray for the people who worry about their health and who seek to live fully as they have done in the past. We pray for people who are vulnerable and rely on others for sustenance in this challenging time. May each of us have everything we need. We pray for those who are sick and suffering and grieving that they might find solace and comfort. We pray to you for you are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And from the order of service, we further pray. O Christ, you are within each of us. It is not just the interiors of these walls, it is our own inner being you have renewed. We are your temple not made with human hands. We are your body and we respond. If every wall should crumble and every church decay, we are your habitation. Nearer are you than breathing, closer than hands and feet, Ours are the eyes with which you in the mystery look out with compassion on the world. So we bless you for this place, for your directing of us, your redeeming of us, your presence among us. Take us outside, O Christ, outside holiness to where nations clash at the crossroads of the world so shall this con building continue to be justified and your people find cause to bless your name. Amen. The hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
Lord God Almighty is our Father. God loves us and tenderly cares for us. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Savior. God has redeemed us and will defend us to the end. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, is amongst us. God will lead us in God's way. To God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory today and forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore.